Hey people, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Instagram, how are you? Right then, there we go. Last day of running in Menorca. Oh, the kind of hot run where you're being a little bit sick at the end. I'm kind of glad it's the last hot run and I've put on the link. I'm very glad actually. But it just amazes me, all I could think of, and I'm not comparing myself to them whatsoever, but um, thinking of, for example, Elizabeth Barnes and other champion ultra runners, or any ultra runner who runs the desert races. Um, I've put a link to Elizabeth Barnes' interview in um, uh, down below, episode 15, it was on One Chat Live. And they're running, for example, in Marathon de Sable, um, they're running in temperatures of, of excess of 45 degrees centigrade sometimes in sand, um, in sandstorms. And they're doing stages with marathons or more every day, a little rest in a tent and then another marathon in ridiculous temperatures. And it's just how, how, how do these human bodies um, train themselves to do feats like this? It's absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, if you want something inspirational, then uh, I've put a link to the Apple podcast to that one, because that's what I was thinking about today, because boy, I, I wanted to stop. I was determined to do oh, five miles today, which in the heat, um, it's five loops, and I know each loop is more or less a mile. So mentally, I've got it kind of sorted, because each time, even if I'm really tired and I right, I just got one loop to do, I've done four, it's fine. But the last loop, um, I was actually feeling a little bit sick which I don't recommend um, unless you are have kind of worked your way up to it. Um, I don't know what temperature it is today. It's not 45. Which I don't know because on the weather last night it said down in the south of Spain it was going to get up to temperatures um, of 45, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I'm not sure. I'll have to find out what temperature it is in Menorca today. I don't. It's not 45. Um, I've been in 45s in Australia. Um, I did roofing for a job. I was young. I needed the money. Um, so yeah, I did uh, laid uh, roofs down in Australia in Cairns, and that was 45, um, and I was black, but I was like, it was ridiculous. Um, I was like Ross from Friends when he got his teeth done. Um, it was just ridiculous, yeah. But um, yeah, so it's not that hot, but it's it's like being sick in your mouth, basically. Lovely conversation, hope no one's having their breakfast, and then just cracking on with it. Um, probably precautions I should have taken, I suppose that's when you should be wearing a headband or something. Um, I don't drink water during runs. It's not that I needed water, it wasn't dehydration, it was the heat. It's, um, yeah, heat exhaustion more than anything. Um, which is an interesting topic in itself, which I won't talk about now because I don't want to hang around for too long, but I've recommended quite a few times now um, the book Endure by Alex Hutchinson. Um, and Alex Hutchinson is a guest on One Chat Live as well, talking about the book Endure, talking about the feats of the human body um, in in high temperatures and low temperatures and in ridiculous fatigue. Um, and that's worth, definitely, definitely worth a look as well, whether you get the Audible or the, um, the paperback from Amazon. That's an amazing book. But anyway, so yeah, um, I'm not going to do another run tomorrow in Menorca. I'll have to do my run, my daily run. Um, I'm on a plane tomorrow and then back in England by four, so I'll do an evening run in the cold, in the dark. That'd be nice with the head torch. <coughs> oh, excuse me. There's a little bit more. You know, you just boil it just so you can keep going. You know, that was a litre. <clears throat> I don't think it's because of dehydration, it's just because of the cold bringing your body temperature down. But anyway, so yeah, it's been a fun week, I think, or six days or something, seven days of runs in Menorca. <coughs> Very hot. I'm getting older. Normally I'd handle that heat better. Today was tough. Um, but then again, I'm not, to tell you the truth, I'm running at like, 1.30 in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, which is probably getting towards the hottest time of the day. So I'm not really doing myself any favours. But as I get older, I used to get up at like 6 in the morning before the kids get up. And then do my run then in sensible temperatures just as the sun's coming up. But I think sleep patterns change. Well, if you'd listened to the uh, 
Sports Therapy Association chat I had with Dr. Amy Bender on Tuesday from Menorca. Actually, it's not out as a podcast yet. You can watch it on Facebook um, in the Sports Therapy Association. You can watch it on YouTube, I think, as well. Um, as long as I put it in a playlist, you should be able to find it on Sports Therapy Association. Yeah, talking about chronotypes changing as you get older. Um, and for me now, the idea of getting up at six in the morning, having a run, is beyond my um, possibilities. I just wouldn't enjoy it as much. For me, it's a case of a nice, literally breakfast, a beautiful breakfast with queso manchego, y tostada, con salsa de tomate, bueno, salsa de tomate, no, pero esa salsa que hacen los españoles, y eso, oh, precioso. Having that for breakfast, with a beautiful cortado, um, yeah, amazing. Um, and then some swimming, playing with the kids. So my run is basically when my morning relaxation is done, then I've got the bit between my teeth and I go out for a run. But it is in midday sun, so it's a pretty crazy time. <clears throat> but it feels good. But anyway, looking forward to getting back to England. Nearly at nearly at um, 20 weeks of daily runs. Coming up to 140. So that'll be the longest run streak. Will it be? Yeah, it will be. I don't think I've done 20 weeks before. No, that'll be the longest run streak I've done, which is exciting. Um, no real plans of how long I'm going to do it for. I just kind of managed to fit it into my daily life now, and I'm enjoying supporting other people doing the daily challenges. Um, it's inspired me, thanks to the Run A Day team, to put together some videos. Um, the whole uh, Runner's Guide 15 lesson course which is available at Run Chat Live was um, inspired by the Run A Day team uh, back in April, that's why I started in April doing daily runs um, it started at doing daily runs minimum of 5k's, now it's kind of, well April was 5k's now I'm kind of doing between 5k's and 10k's, you know it's around depends, depends on the day, depends on my week, I'm trying to still now do a slightly longer run, so I did do a 10 mile run a couple of times um, so playing around with it, but yeah the main idea is getting out every day for a run and I'm enjoying supporting other people, embarking on that challenge um, I'm not saying everybody should do a run streak for more than a month, but if you can get that mental discipline um, which is what it is more than anything, okay, it's more than physical, it's mental, that you can't really yeah, you can, can you sing to two? It's the mental challenge more than anything. It is, because you've got to get out of that door. You've got to organise your life. You've got to make sure the people around you realise that you're not going to neglect other duties and stuff. If you can do that for a month, bingo, you are going to feel a lot better. Well, I say that. depends. If you don't like running, then, then you won't. So I can't guarantee everyone's going to like it. But for most people, um, getting a little bit of exercise every day is going to one give you those physical benefits we know the body responds to exercise your metabolism is increased um, that your, your whole body is more receptive to absorbing nutrients again with dr amy bender um, she talked about how exercise increases your REM sleep your deep sleep so it allows repair of the body it improves your cognitive ability um, to actually process thoughts and solve things and bring down anxiety and it's 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 amazing and one of my interests now through doing this is I was listening to the Dr. Lieberman book um, exercise something or other and it was talking about how for many people exercise is not fun and it's all as soon as you say do daily exercise it's just a chore Okay, for the most people, exercise is not fun. It's not something they want to do. Um, um, and there's a lot of negative connotations with it. And when you're trying to get people to go out and do some daily exercise, it's almost like you need to change the word. You need to change the mindset. And I can understand that, even though I, I don't know, for me, it's not really exercise. For me, and this is what I need to try and strive to clients and people listening. For me, it's your life. You know, it's setting you up for your life. Um, and it's, but you've got to get on that train somehow. And I know it's a real challenge and many, many, many people can't. There's so many reasons not to do it. This is why I personally, I mean, I love running, obviously, but even the walking is a fantastic exercise. And if you can get out of your house every day, 
do a run a day challenge set yourself 1k walking challenge for a month okay now for most people um, again it's not for everybody it depends on your levels of fitness but for an awful lot of people physically 1k a day is not going to be a challenge the challenge is going to be actually getting out that door resisting the temptation just to sit down you know with your cup of tea take the weight off your feet do all those things which you associate with relaxation which are primed into your brain the, the association is already there it could be a cigarette it could be a cup of coffee it could be putting your feet up it could be switching on and watching jeremy kyle whatever it is you've got that neuro tag in your brain which as soon as you do that thing you get that it, almost endorphins coming out thinking i'm fine you know you can get that same satisfaction eventually you can create that neuro tag create that little memo in your brain for getting out the front door and smelling the flowers every day for a K. You can do it. It might take a while and it won't be linear. It won't be every single day is amazing. Some days you'll go, I can't be bothered. I just don't feel like it. It's just, oh, what's the point? And you'll start getting all the negative neuro tags going off like, oh, I'm not going to get my work done. Oh, I won't have time to make dinner for the kids. Oh, blah, blah, blah. But that's all the bad voices in your head giving you reasons not to do it. And it is a challenge mentally to go, look, do it. It's okay. I've done it five days in a row now. I'm not going to stop now because I want to, at the end of the month, go, I've done it every month. I want to prove people wrong. I want to celebrate it. You know, so that really is uh, what exercise is all about. It's setting yourself something really realistic so, and, and understanding it's a mental challenge and not biting off too much. And for so many people, you will feel it, it's life changing. It really can be. Um, and addictive in a good way. So there you go. Too deep? I don't know. What do you think, Samantha Shelton? Thanks for watching. Hope you're well. Um, so yeah, that's why I do the Run A Day Challenge. Um, and thank you for everybody who's emailed me. Um, and keep them coming. And let me know if, um, yeah, if any of these videos have been useful for you. Right, my little is back. I'm going to say goodbye. And uh, next time I see you, it will be back in England. Um, yeah, it's a nice